Okay, it seems to be in good enough shape. It's not underlined or anything. So I guess we'll get it. Also, this book right here, The Third Policeman by Flat O'Brien, was donated by me. And to prove that it was, those are the annotations that I had referred to in my unhaul in which I featured this. And this here is at Beach Town Books. So there you go. Okay, so after careful consideration, I have decided that this particular translation is null and void. I have been examining this for about a few days, and I kept noticing in it that word right there, Jehovah. I'm sure if I could just flip to any random place in here, you will see Jehovah. Jehovah. It's what a New Testament. Jehovah. Um, yes, this here Bible is actually used by the Jehovah's Witnesses. I had thought that that was the case, but was later, um, this notion of mine was later confirmed by Ahab, who had, uh, uh left a comment in the, uh, you know, down below, and uh, basically uh, gave his, uh, I suppose, opinions on the matter and such. And doesn't necessarily think this the best translation. So, uh, I think I will just get rid of this here, and uh, I will either stick with the new, or not new, I will either stick with my old King James here, this is, uh, well, this, is, this doesn't look new, but this is a new copy that I just procured at a rummage sale, and it's a very nice little compact edition, you know, with the, uh, the thumb index, and it's very nice, I think. So I'd either do that, or, as you saw from the little clip earlier, I just required this, um, a New American Standard Bible, which is what Ahab had recommended. Now, he did say that, uh, you know, uh, he was talking about an edition from 2013, Whereas this one here, well, actually this one, this uh, Jehovah's Witnesses one was published in 2013. This New American Standard here was published in 1997. Now, this is a bit dated, but I'm sure that the translation will be just fine. And if there is a, a newer translation there really won't be that much of a difference, if any. But I've been flipping through this. If I just go to some familiar verses here. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 2. In this one, and then we'll go to Ephesians chapter two.
in this one. And then Ephesians chapter 2. In this one, the null and void one. Um, so, I will go ahead and read to you, if I can find these verses here. So, first we will read from my preferred King James Version here, um, chapter 2 of Ephesians and verse 8. Uh, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And now we will read from the uh, New American Standard Version. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. And then this... Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses one here, by this undeserved kindness you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, rather it is God's gift. No, it is not a result of works, so that no one should have grounds for boasting. This one here seems a bit verbose and a bit clunky and awkward when I try to read this here. Uh, this here and the King James seem to be fairly good, uh, whereas obviously this one here is a bit more updated for uh, the modern readers. The King James obviously uh, is written the way it is. So I will go ahead and give this back to Mum. And uh, I will continue to examine uh, this here uh, alongside uh, the King James. Because I have been searching here through uh, just familiar sections and such. And Ahab and I were talking in the comments about how there were just various uh, the, uh, translation errors in the King James and such because of... Uh, not because you know of uh, Hebrew and Aramaic uh, languages and such. Um, before I get to that, I'll actually read to you here a familiar verse, another familiar verse. Of course, I'm going to head to the one that comforted me most in my time of need, which is Isaiah 57:10. So we'll read from the King James here. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet sayest thou not there is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou was not faint, grieved. Sorry, I'm still tr I'm still remembering the the Catholic version and uh, wanted to say those words, but uh, apparently that's actually how you read it in this version. So now we head down to the uh, New American Standard, uh, Isaiah 57.10. You were tired out by the length of your road, yet you did not say it is hopeless. You found renewed strength, therefore you did not faint. You can see there that um, it, it, the wordage is a bit different. It's actually more similar to the Catholic version that I do have. Uh, whereas this here is a bit more, dare I say, antiquated and such. But uh, Ahab and I were talking and such, and he said that uh, um, in the King James, uh, there came an instance... Uh, several instances. There are instances in Numbers and in Deuteronomy uh, in which the creature known as... Well, a creature is 
described in here, and they call it a unicorn in the King James Version. Obviously, you know what a unicorn is. Uh, it's a mythical one-horned horse or pegasus or something of that nature. If I could just find the actual the actual thing. Okay, so I believe it was Deuteronomy 33 where I saw this. And uh, let me turn to King James here. This chain reference is actually pretty helpful. I know some people don't necessarily think this to be the greatest thing. Some people are against the chain reference because, you know, you should know your Bible. But I, I quite like it, you know. It makes it much easier to find the books and everything. Uh, especially for, uh, uh, you know, just a casual Christian like myself who reads the Bible for himself and does not uh, necessarily take to the sway of what anyone says about religion. Okay, so I believe it's in here somewhere. So it's Deuteronomy 30... My, my, my apology. Okay, there we go. 3017... Or 3317, pardon me. Uh, let's see. You can see there, it says, His glory, in the King James, is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the ten the thousands of of Manasseh, 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 jeez. Um, and then here, Ahab was talking to me, you know, since that says unicorns right there, uh, this part of the Bible, uh, the Old Testament, was translated from Hebrew and Aramaic. The New Testament, as you all know, is from Greek, uh, whereas this here is... Uh, in Hebrew and Aramaic in parts. And uh, this word right here, unicorn, supposedly derives from an, the Hebrew word for wild ox. And uh, you can see here, uh, as the firstborn of his ox in the New American Version, his majesty, or majesty is his. And his horns are the horns of the wild ox. Them will them he will push the peoples with them he will push the peoples. Sorry, it's still early. Well, it's not early. It's around four thirty in the afternoon. I've just been sleeping all day. I've just been so exceedingly tired. I don't know why. Uh, with them he will push all the peoples all at once to the ends of the earth. And those are the ten thousand of Ephraim, and those are the thousands of Manasseh. Manasa. So, that there makes a whole lot more sense. You know, wild ox instead of uh, unicorns right here. Uh, now, I do know that there are certain Christians who believe that unicorns did at a point exist, yet they were uh, not fortunate enough to earn a position on the ark uh, in the time of the Great Flood. Uh, I don't believe that, because those people tend to also justify a reason for the existence of the mythical dinosauria, of which I no longer believe. And uh, there will be a video about that. Believe you me, there will be a video about why I do not believe that dinosaurs existed anymore. Uh, let's just... Uh, flip along in here and see if we can find some more uh, familiar verses. Just to see... I don't know how things are, I suppose. So we'll go to, I believe, 1 John. 
chapter 2. And we're reading out a verse, I believe, what is it, 4? Yeah, so let's go to 1 John 2, 4, in this one here. Okay, so King James will read there. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Uh, we have here in the New American Standard. Uh, wait, is this two? Oh, that's the second letter to Peter. Goodness gracious, my apologies. There, there we are. Uh, so we got here two eight. Two, four. The one who says, I come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. And then we go on to verse 5. Uh, he that saith he abideth in him ought to walk himself also, so to walk even as he did. Uh, or as he walked, and then uh, the one who says that he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. So, it seems to be an all right translation to me. Uh, I'm still quite used to the King James, uh, even though Ahab has informed me that King James onlyism is actually a very Americanized uh, form of belief. I was not aware of that. I thought it was fairly international and uh, fairly transatlantic, but apparently, uh, no, it's not. It's uh, it is focused. It has been originated entirely in in in, in America. So uh, I'm not entirely sure. Well, the people I did listen to uh, in my in my days of spiritual war warfare were from America. So that does make a lot of sense. So. Let's go here. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And then in here, for the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. And some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and perceived all or proceed themselves with many griefs. That there might be a bit questionable. Now, I'm not sure if it's because this is older or what in the world the deal is, because you can see, for the love of money is the root of all evil in there, whereas in here it's all sorts of evil. Uh, it's not really getting the proper message across, I don't think, but uh, that's the king, that's... Uh, the born again in me speaking, but uh, yeah, 1997 from the Lockman Foundation. Do let me know, Ahab, if this particular publication uh, is any good, because uh, this, as I said, this is an older one, and I'm not exactly sure about this whole thing here. But uh, I will continue to examine this uh, and see just what this is all about uh, alongside with the King James. And I will let you know, you know, if I think it worthy or not of myself keeping. But in, like I said, if any of you know any more about this thing here, this uh, new... American Standard Version, uh, do let me know about it. And if you want to help me in my search to find the proper translation for me, other than the King James, uh, I'm more than happy to hear your opinions on the matter. So, 
uh, that would be about it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and head to a very important section here for me. Uh, just to uh, close things here. And that is Matthew um, 17. I believe it's Matthew 17, 13. Or hang on a sec. It's Matthew. Oh, goodness. Do I have the right thing? Hang on a second. Matthew 13, 7. Okay, okay. All right, that makes sense, I think. My apologies if this seems rather boring and me just flipping through Bibles, but uh, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what you find as entertainment here. Uh, where are they? People's hearts will be All right, hang on just a bit. I actually need to uh, uh, see exactly where this place is, so uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so it turns out that... Uh, the verse I was looking for is in Matthew 7, uh, 15. Uh, and I actually had to look that up for myself on the computer because I am an idiot. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, head to that verse here. In the King James, you can see I'm there. And now we'll head to it in this new American Standard Version. Okay. So it says there, Matthew 7.15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Something very important to keep in mind, especially uh, uh, nowadays. And then here uh, in this version, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. And that's basically the same thing there, just with one or two words removed. So that's pretty good. But with that, I will leave you. And uh, I hope you all have a blessed day. I will go ahead and continue to examine these just to see the differences and similarities uh, in them. And I'll let you know what I think. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have your own opinions as to this matter, do let me know in the comments. So, cheers.